Welcome to Let's Talk Ed and Zahi. We are talking about uh, stackable certificates, how they can be used, and uh, we want to kind of get into some some real world type examples of how stackable certificates can be used. And in the last episode, we started talking about one of the examples, and that was in the automotive industry with with ASE certifications. Yes, uh, and there are plenty of examples uh, out there. Uh, one that uh, jumps uh, to my mind is on the uh, emergency medical uh, side. You know, the EMS, you've got EMR, EMS, the A and the B and the advanced and the cardiac and then the paramedic uh, and, and so on. So as you see, it's it's not a bunch of classes. No, it's it's a set of self-contained yet springboarding learning opportunities for the next set of uh, um, programs or, or courses or certificates, whatever fits into that stack uh, there. But each one allows you to be employed and allows you to be doing some particular set of competencies. And I think that's the the key right there is, you know, each one allows you to be employed. And I think, you know, one of the, the key differences, if you're taking a, a degree program uh, and I take a handful of classes, I may not be career ready at that point. I may have part of the knowledge that I need, but I may not be all the way there yet. Um you know, and we're not advocating by any means saying, you know, I take a class and I get a certificate. But what we are saying is, you know, let's have something where we can kind of stair step up. And the more certifications you have that that unlocks different abilities. So, you know, you talk about emergency medicine there again, and every one of those levels uh, is important, but the more you have, the more you can do, the more employable you are likely, the more demand there is for the skills that you have. Uh, but again, you have an opportunity to get into the workforce after any one of those. Yes. And, and once you get into the workforce, you also have the great opportunity of honing your skills, right? Learning and bringing that knowledge back to the next uh, block of learning, so it it it, op it opens uh, life and work to that uh, lifelong learning that we love to talk about, and to those experiential opportunities that otherwise we wouldn't have. And and it also ties in really well with the conversation that we had uh, a few weeks ago regarding the transferability of. Uh, of credits into institutions of higher learning, right? Now, when you're learning uh, things and you're perfecting them, albeit you're not in a building that is accrediting by the, accredited by this or that agency, but you're achieving a learning and you're folding it back into a college. And one of the things I like about the, the stackable certificate idea too, is I think it's really good for a non-traditional student, um, you know, because not everybody is necessarily going to be the, I went to college at 18 and I was done at 22 and I entered the workforce and I stay in the workforce until I retire, um, you know, in, in the same, same profession area from 22 until 60 something. Uh, so, you know, if you're going back to school, uh, you know, maybe you are changing careers, maybe, you know, your family dynamics have changed. The idea of having to enter a program that might take two years or four years or however long it takes may be a bigger bite at the apple than you can take. But now if I can go in and, hey, I can get this certification in a shorter window, go right into that industry. And if I want to keep building up on that, I still can. But now at least I can do that and be employable. Excellent point. 
And even if we leave for the world of career preparation, career technical education, uh, vocations, trades, occupations, whatever one uh, would like to call them, and, and venture into transfer, I think there's quite a bit of benefit to rethinking how we offer the classes of general education for that individual that is intending to transfer. It's also something that is empowering to know that you didn't just get a grade, you've achieved a certain level of mastery. Uh, so I would, I would uh, envision things uh, like that include your writing skills in your composition class and your intro to psychology and history and anthropology and whatnot as a foundation, as a first building block to have uh, been further, which is your next block, hence a stackability right there. It's not just um, an opportunity to hand a piece of paper to a student that says, yay, you finished something. But it is. And there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with celebrating those comp or students to let them know that what they're doing is it's not easy. It's far easier to, to drop off uh, and drop out. So, uh, I, I think part of revolutionizing higher education is, is to really rethink how we can wrap around the student her and his needs. What do you think about that idea? Yeah, no, I, I really like that a lot. And, you know, looking at it through my, my marketing lens, too. Um, you know, the idea that you can tell a student, you take this class or this series of classes, um, you know, you're going to have some sort of a badge or a certification to go with that that shows your level of mastery versus, you know, I took whatever 101 and that's where the, con you know, that's where the sentence stops. Um you know, and again, I'm I'm by no means advocating that every class comes with its own badge or certificate. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, the idea of being able to sell a class that, hey, if you take this, then you're going to get this thing that you can put on your resume or, you know, on LinkedIn or whatever to show that you have this this mastery of this, I think is really important because as the student, uh, I have something to show for that to employers. Now, more than just saying, I took blah, 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 101. Yeah, uh, but yes. Uh, and uh, going back to the, the technical education, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the students, especially when I was in California, we would get in construction or in welding uh, in particular, where they would be coming in for one class. We didn't see that necessarily in agriculture. We didn't see that in computer science. We didn't see that in, in, in diesel or auto, but we saw it very strikingly. So they came in to learn uh, how to pour concrete. They came in to learn how to do TIG welding. It could be a class, it could be two or three, however many in that area. And that resulted in an increased hourly wage even if it is one dollar, you know, that's 40 it's a difference between being able to buy shoes for your kid for uh, when they go back to school or not. And, and it's uh, doing that. Think about what students have been doing for decades, which is to gravitate toward how they can arm themselves with the tools of success and build it. Now, build it from our perspective with all the competencies that are needed, with all the pedagogical uh, requirements embedded, I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot to mine there. Absolutely. And, you know, sort of the value proposition that colleges make in general is you come to our college, we are going to enhance your, your employability. Um, you know, it, nobody wants to necessarily get into something that I finish this and nobody wants to hire me because that knowledge is awful. Um, but, you know, and if you can do things where you're enhancing their quality of life and it's not out of the question too, that depending on the industry, 
they may even be willing to pay for some of that education to advance your knowledge to move you up the line. Um, you know, and I think that's that's fascinating. And we've got an interview coming up in our next episode with Dr. Sandra Kiddo. And I think it's going to be a really interesting conversation going into some more detail on this. So, you know, definitely subscribe to our channel, ring the bell down below for notifications. That way you'll know exactly when we post that. Uh, and if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform or you want to find us on a podcasting platform, we are there. You can find us and, uh, you know, definitely hope you enjoy uh, listening to us here on Let's Talk Ed. So for Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk Ed.